So last week we looked at our, our topic was lest we should offend. Wow. Look at this. Come in, come in. Tra- weary travel, travelers. <laughs> Good to see y'all. Um, Matthew 17 is what, where we kind of spent our focus last week. Uh, looking, that's actually where we find that phrase, lest we should offend. So we will read the verse 27 in Matthew 17, where this was where it, Peter was asked, does your master pay the temple tax? Does he pay tribute? Um, and Peter says, of course he does. And then, he, then Jesus, knowing his heart, you know, asked the question, does the, the king's take custom or tribute of strangers or their own children. And Peter, of course, said strangers. And Jesus said, then are the children free, notwithstanding, verse 27, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. And it it turns out if you look at the Greek there, you'll find out that it was exact amount of money necessary to pay the temple tax for Two males, so both Peter and Christ were taken care of with that. But my, what I wanted to point out here was that Jesus is concerned with offending them. And so lest we should offend them, go and do this. He was concerned, may, concerned about not offending them. And so we looked at that last week, uh, considering four reasons why not to offend. And we said, do not offend. Number one, if to do so would be to disobey authority, even if you don't agree with their demands, if... To obey won't be an act of disobedience to God. So that's the submitting to authority. Um, Number two, uh, when not to offend. Don't offend if it's best for their souls to not offend. And we said we need discernment for that. And we're going to see the flip side of that, Lord willing, today. Number three, don't offend if it would cast God's ministry in a bad light. Right? If it would reflect poorly on Him, then don't offend. And then finally we said, simply put, don't offend if offending is unnecessary because we're called to be peacemakers, right? As much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. And so we read this passage last week, but we read a companion passage, right? And so let's flip back a couple of chapters in Matthew 15 and uh, round about verse number 12. We read beginning from verse number 1, but the disciples were challenged as to why they were, or, or Jesus was challenged as to why his disciples was not eating and washing in the ceremonial manner that was their tradition, the tradition of the of the elders. And Jesus said, well, why are you dishonoring and disobeying the command of God by keeping your tradition? And uh, we know as it goes on that the disciples came to Christ in verse number 12 and said, don't you know that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? And so if we if we Assume what's coming next based on what we just read in Matthew 17, then we would assume Jesus would say, well, lest we should offend them, go back and do this. But what does he say? But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Leave them alone. Right? So in this case, he's not concerned with offending. Leave them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And so like we said last week, this is an important topic for us because we're this is pushing our face all the time nowadays, right? Oh, you can't offend and you know, you got to be politically correct and I told you we had long training at work over this about you know, just making sure that you're not offending one another. And so it's important that we understand that Jesus Christ did both. Sometimes he didn't offend and other times he did offend. And I just want to say this, for some of us the not offending thing is the easy path, right? For some of us, we're just naturally drawn to, you know, I don't like turmoil. I don't want to rock the boat. And so we don't want to offend. Well, you need to pay close attention today, right? And you need to understand that there are times that it's necessary to offend. And we just saw one of those times right here. And then there, there are some of us that like a good fight. We like a good debate, especially if we can out-argue the next guy, right? You you need to go back and listen to the message last week again if it didn't sink in last week, right? It's absolutely appropriate at times to not not offend. In fact, it would be wrong for us to do so. While we're here in Matthew, look at Matthew 18. Because I want us to see here that sometimes offending has eternal consequences. 
And in Matthew 18 and verse number Verse number five, Jesus says, And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me, but whoso shall what? Offend one of these little ones which believe in me. Well, who are we talking about when he says little, little ones here? We're talking about believers. We're talking about those that approach God as little children. Those that offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world! Because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. God is using offenses. I was talking with someone this morning about the effectiveness of, of turmoil and trial and tribulation to, to uh, send the gospel out into places that it would never go before. Uh, for God to, uh, you know, in the furnace of fire to purify his people and, and, and send his word out in, in unique ways that we, we just, we get comfortable and we would stay here. It's like Acts 8, 1, you know, when persecution hits the church, it says they're scattered and the gospel goes with them. So it's necessary that offenses come and God uses offenses, but... Woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Just because God's big enough to even use sin to accomplish his purposes, he's not the author of sin, and man's still going to be judged for his sin. Absolutely. So this idea of offenses and offending, it's a big deal, right? And we see it has eternal consequences here. It'd be better to just be drowned before this event ever took place than to offend one of these little ones that believe in me. And so we need to under, we all need to understand that sometimes Christ offended and sometimes he did not. Twice he chased men out of the temple. More than once he called men hypocrites. That's offensive. And yet this bold champion for truth said, tenderly let the little children come to me. Right? He was a sheep before his shears is dumb. It says he opened not his mouth. He submitted in that instance when they attacked and mocked him and he didn't offend so we see both things which way is right both are right we're called to walk by faith and you know what faith demands faith demands that we take each situation as a unique situation from the lord god how do i honor you in this specific circumstance proverbs 26 a brother shared this with me Maybe two brothers shared this with me. I know at least one did, so I'm not going to call out the one so I don't offend the other brother. <laughs> Proverbs 26 and verse number 4, listen to this. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. All right, check. Got it. Write that down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that. Let's see what the next verse says. Answer a fool according to his folly lest he be wise in his own conceit. What just happened? I mean, if there's ever been an example, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that unbelievers like to do is, is to expose these supposed contradictions in the word of God, right? Well, you don't have to read very far here or dig very deep, right? You got one verse after the other. One says one thing and the next one seems to say the exact opposite. What's going on there? Well, one time it's absolutely appropriate to act as in verse number four. That's the necessary action. Other times the necessary action is that which is listed in verse number five. It's a unique situation and we need the spirit of God to lead us how to act in each of those circumstances. And so that's what we're going to see today. Sometimes it's appropriate to offend. Last week we saw that it is sometimes appropriate to not offend. So when should we offend? Let's answer that question, all right? And these are going to be very similar to what we considered last week, but of course the, the opposite of it. When should we offend? Number one, when it's a matter of obeying God rather than men, right? What did we say last week? When should you not offend? The first thing we listed is when it's submitting to that authority, even if we don't agree with what they said, if obeying them is not to disobey God, right? Don't offend in that instance. Well, here's the situation where if we obeyed men rather than God, we would offend God. It would be disobedience to God. So in those instances, it's important that we offend. Now, how we handle the offending is still important, right? We need to be sure that it's the truth that offends and not the manner in which we confess 
the truth. But I want you, I want to show you an example in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, the disciples are imprisoned for confessing Jesus Christ. They were grieved in verse number 2 that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And in verse number 3, they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even tied. Do you read anywhere in there that the disciples said as they came to take them, they boldly resisted that which they were trying to do and said, you have no right and authority to do this. They just submitted to it. Verse number 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they've, they've, they've called the Sanhedrin together. They've got the council gathered together there along with the high priest, and they've put them on trial. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power, by what name have you done this? They submitted to that trial. They did not offend in those instances. They submitted to that authority over them. But after they make their confession here, and then in verse number 18, they call them in, this, the, the council does again, and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now we've got a problem, right? Now you're commanding me to do that which would require me to disobey God. And so the disciples had to politely decline, right? Verse number 19 but Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we can but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Don't you know they were offended by that? It doesn't matter. We've got to obey God rather than men. And so when it's a matter of obeying God rather than men, absolutely, we're going to have to offend man and say, like the three Hebrew children, right? Throw us in the fiery furnace. God can deliver us. Will he deliver us from the fiery furnace? We don't know, but we can't do what you're saying. Because to do what you say would be to disobey one that is greater than you. Almighty God. We got to do what God said. So we must offend. It's necessary that we offend in those instances. Number two. When else should we offend? We said last time when not to offend, if it's best for their souls to not defend. This time we're going to say to not offend. This time we're going to say when should we offend when it's best for their souls to offend. Right? And just like I said with it last week, we need discernment to understand this. We must have discernment to understand when to do which one. Look at Jude 21. Jude, verse 21. When it's best for their souls, offend, if that's what's necessary. Verse 21. Now, listen to verse 21 here. And I think this, I think this speaks to what the point and the, what, the, what the motive is behind all of this. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in the what? Love of God. In other words, what I'm about to tell you to do, this is an act of love, right? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And, right, so we're, we're using a word that's going to connect whatever this verse says here with that which just went before. And of some have compassion making a difference. You know what I read in light of this study? That verse says right there, and for some... Don't offend them. Some have compassion, making a difference. And we're still working on the same thought. And others offend them. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. You're going to have to say some hard things that are uncomfortable that they're not going to want to hear. But it's what's best for their souls because you're keeping yourself in the love of God. And you're being like Jesus Christ who one time says, I told them what they needed to hear. Leave them alone. Let it sit with them. They're going to have to deal with my father concerning that. And others, he said, I don't want to give them the wrong oppression and I don't want to offend them. And I don't want this to be a stumbling block to them. So go do this. Both were appropriate. 
at that particular moment. We have two courses of action here. How are we going to understand when and where to do that? It's going to be by the leadership of the Holy Ghost. It's going to be walking by faith and understanding in each circumstance which one is appropriate. If it's best for their souls to offend, if I can't offend them and I'm motivated by love and and an eternal care for them, then do it. That's what they need. And that's the case in our text that we read in Matthew 15. That's what those Pharisees needed to hear. Should they have been allowed to go on in error? Was that the best thing for them? To to, to sit up here in this this place of high-mindedness, looking down on the disciples and judging them and totally ignoring the fact that they, through their tradition, were obeying men rather than God? They needed to be offended they needed to hear the truth that's what was best for their souls did you look at acts chapter 15 i don't i don't know if you realize this or not but listen to what acts 15 around verse number five says this is the church All right, this is the New Testament church that we're talking about here. Acts 15, that's the passage where they're deliberating, you know, this issue of circumcision and whether the Gentiles need to be circumcised. And, you know, the church is kind of divided over. There's some in one camp and some in the other camp. The result of the whole thing is that they're going to come together in unity and be in agreement over this. But listen to what it says about some of these Christians, these are true believers here. Verse number five, but there arose, there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. What's the next two words? Believed. Which believed. My point is some of these Pharisees got saved. Some of these Pharisees that Jesus offended. That's what they needed to hear. That's what was best for their souls. Some of these Pharisees were saved. Some of the very ones that were offended because the truth penetrated. The truth, it says, the word of God is is living, it's alive, right? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And and it gets down there, it divides between the joints and the marrow. It it separates soul and spirit. It gets down into places that nothing else can. And so sometimes it's that offensive, penetrating word that... That has that. They may not like it to start with, but then they go back and they think about it and they get before God with it and they're like, wow, that's the truth. Some of these Pharisees got saved. Um, look at 2120. Acts 21. And when they heard it, about what God had done, among the Gentiles by his ministry, when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. But they were true believers. So the offending word is just as needful as the non-offending word at times for souls eternal good. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Paul writes to Titus, um, and he says that there are some unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, verse number 10, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, and so what do you need to do? You need to offend them, Right? Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. That's not of some having compassion making a difference, right? That's not the kind of language we're talking about. This is the ones that you hate the garment spotted with the flesh, snatching them from fire kind of language. Rebuke them sharply. Why? To what end? What's the purpose and the goal of that sharp rebuke? That they may be sound in the faith. That's what's best for their souls. So when should we offend? When it's best for their souls to do so. And then number three, I only have three points on this one. When should we offend if to not offend 
would hinder the furtherance of the gospel. We should offend if to not offend would hinder the furtherance of the gospel. Look at Galatians chapter 2. In Galatians chapter 2, he's dealing with this issue of circumcision and they were trying to bring the Galatians, there were those that wanted to bring the Galatians into bondage and saying, you've got to be circumcised. And remember, this is the epistle where Paul says, if you get circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. You're adding to the work of Jesus Christ. And it's, 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 uh, it's an abomination before God. We don't have anything to offer God that's pleasing to him. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by faith um, that we are saved, by grace through faith that we are saved. And so he says, these false brethren came... Uh, uh, because of false brethren, verse 4, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. He says, to whom we gave place by subjection. No! (laughs) Not even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue in you. He says, I wasn't concerned about offending these men and, you know, trying to handle them with kid gloves when they came in. Absolutely not. I put my foot down, right? I resisted, I gripped my teeth, and we're going to withstand this because to, to, to act like this is no big deal would hinder the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so he said, I didn't give place to them even for an hour. I said, I, he said, I don't care who they were or who they seemed to be, verse 6, but of these who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accept that no man's person. I don't care who it is. Because to go along with their error will be damaging to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This will be harmful to all the souls that are here. I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's the Apostle Peter. Right? That's what he says in the rest of this chapter here. But when Peter was come, verse number 11 to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. You think Peter enjoyed that? That might have been offensive. Why did I do this? Because he was to be blamed. Listen, he did it boldly before everybody, and so I rebuked him boldly before everybody for the gospel's sake. Because he came in and he separated himself, and he's like, I could already see what a powerful effect this was going to have because other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that even Barnabas, my fellow laborer, They were, you know, the preaching duo here. And he was carried away with their dissimulation or their hypocrisy. And so he rebukes. He gives that offending word. It was necessary and it was effective. And the error was dealt with and it was squelched before it did damage. So don't offend if, I mean, I'm sorry, offend if to not offend would hinder the furtherance of the gospel. It may not be as cut and dried as we'd like. Let's close with 2 Corinthians chapter 10, right? We, we like those nice cut and dried ones where uh, we don't have to, we're not sick on our stomachs, right? And can't sleep and, you know, praying and crying. Guys, that's what it means to walk by faith, right? That's what it is to walk with God. It's like not depending on me, but I'm depending on you, Lord, and I need to understand what to do in this circumstance here. Sometimes you answer the fool according to his folly. Sometimes you don't. We need the Spirit of God to lead us in those circumstances. I I, I just thought this was a good passage to kind of highlight the two sides of this coin, right? And to show you the customary manner of the Apostle Paul. You know, what did I say last time? When should we not not offend? That should be our normal practice. Because we're to live peaceably as much as is within us, right? That should be our goal, to be peacemakers. But sometimes it's necessary to offend. And so Paul's normal practice that we read here in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. Now, I, Paul, beseech myself, I'm sorry, I, Paul, myself, beseech you, By the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. That's my normal pattern in practice. 
who in presence and base among you, that's, guy, that's how you guys know me. You don't see me as someone coming in, tooting my own horn, you know, and stepping on whoever's toes I step on, and I don't really care. You see a meek and a humble man when I'm among you. Isn't that what, how Jesus described this himself? Coming to me, all your labor and heavy labor. Take my yoke upon you, for I'm meek and lowly of heart. That's the way the Apostle Paul was. I'm in presence base among you, but being absent, I'm bold towards you. I, 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 don't, I don't like that confrontational stuff, right? And so I'm going to say these things in a, in a letter to you when we're not face to face to make it more uncomfortable with you. So you can pray and digest these things and talk about these things. But I want you to understand something. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some. He said, I may be customarily base among you, but I don't mind stepping on toes when I get before you in person if that's what's needful. Bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Which one's right? Both are necessary. At the appropriate time. If things didn't change, Paul said that spirit of meekness would of necessity be changed to boldness. Some of you are going to be offended, right? We need the spirit of the Lord to lead us and guide us. You know, like I said, some of us are just naturally disposed to one or the other one way is easier than the other that's kind of customary that's just our natural inclination we need to recognize that both are needful for God's glory for the good of the souls that we're dealing with sometimes we need to offend sometimes we shouldn't the world says don't offend ever unless you're offending the ones that don't mind offending you know they God says both are appropriate you need to walk by faith to understand. Yeah. Any final thoughts as we close? Don Imus is dead. One of the most notorious offenders on radio. Yeah. Hmm. Died this past week. Okay. Gone to his reward. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that name, but you'll have to. He was, he was on radio for 50 years offending huh. anyone he could find. Okay, yeah. right. That's some people's and, disposition. And made millions. Right, right. Making their living off of it. Yeah. Anything else? All right. I'm thankful that the Lord offended me when it was needful. And I'm thankful that the Lord was tender enough to pull me in and put his arms around me when that's needful. We have a good God, don't we?